All right, let us continue our journey in understanding where electrons can be found in an atom. And in Unit 3, that journey started with the idea that el electrons can be considered as waves. And there's definitely evidence and uh, arguments for that. And then we saw or discussed the Bohr model, followed by Broglie's wavelength, followed by Heisenberg uncertainty principle, followed by Schrodinger's equation. And Schrodinger's equation gives us what's called an atomic orbital, volumes in which electrons can most likely be found. So in this video, we will show you most of the different types of atomic orbitals. You've heard of radial probability density. Uh, that is solved, or that is derived from the Schrodinger equation. But nodes is something new to us. Nodes is a volume where there is zero probability that an electron can be found there. Let us get started with a little bit of a review. And the review will be looking at a hydrogen atom. Now, a hydrogen atom has one electron. And the Bohr model predicts pretty well where that electron can be found. Now, the Bohr model, if you recall, has those energy levels. N equals 1, and that is the, we know this as the ground state. And these elect or that electron, the one electron, right, in a hydrogen atom can be pushed up to higher energy levels, right? We'll call it N is energy level. Even though there were other chemists after Bohr that refined the model, the Bohr model is really good for hydrogen. And you could get an excited state. N equals 3, maybe that's excited. The Bohr model falls apart, though, in the sense that the electrons are restricted to an orbit. So you have a nucleus, but then you have these orbits. N equals 1, N equals 2, N equals 3. Orbits, or from now on, let's consider them as energy levels. So the Bohr model does fall apart when you have more electrons, but for the hydrogen it's pretty good. And for the hydrogen, let me find my blue pen, the volume in which that electron can be found is a sphere. It's a sphere. And this is our first orbital. Okay. Again, let's put the nucleus here. Uh, I'll call nucleus P plus N for protons plus neutrons. But in the previous video, when we talked about Schrodinger equation, that orbital, this is called now the s orbital. We're going to start naming these orbitals. The s orbital, the electron can be found within the sphere 90% of the time. Now, yes, it's going to be a lot more dense in terms of where the electron can be found closer to the nucleus and less dense as you get farther from the nucleus. But for all intents and purposes, this is spherical, the shape. Okay, so let us attribute this to Schrodinger's equation. S C H R O Schrodinger. Okay. So we have Bohr and we have Schrodinger. Okay. Now more specifically, for the hydrogen atom, since it has one electron and the ground state is n equals one, specifically this orbital is called 1s. And the 1 stands for the energy level that we get from Bohr. And the S is, I'm not exactly sure where, why they use S, but we'll call it spherical. Spherical. And in the previous video, I warned you that not all atomic orbitals are spherical.
but this is the first atomic orbital that we should learn about. Now, in n equals 2, does that have an s orbital? Yes. n equals 3, does that have an s orbital? Yes. And as we get in uh, larger n values, you increase the size. So the 2s is a sphere, but bigger. A 3s is a sphere, but bigger. But now, let us look at the radial probability density. And I have a figure for this. Because there's a peculiarity that comes out of the Schrodinger equation when we look at the electron distribution, or specifically the radial probability density. If you recall from our discussion on Schrodinger's equation, that is a graphical, uh, graphical representation of the sum of psi squared. Right? This is the um, probability density. But when you sum it up, you'll get a graph that shows you the radial probability density. And that figure you've seen before, if you've been watching these videos in order, and it's this. So this is just a representation of what I drew. Now don't, uh, don't let these uh, concentric circles confuse you. The s orbital is this last circle right here. I think they're just mar marking the distance with these inner circles. Okay, And then your radial distribution or radial, radial probability distribution has this shape, and it's very similar to when you have an apple tree where the apples fall. Most of them are going to be close to the trunk, but none of them, right? None of them are in the trunk. Just like here, no electron is found when your distance from the radius is zero. Is zero. Okay. Okay. Now here comes the tricky part. The tricky part is I mentioned that. The other energy levels, energy level n equals 2, energy level n equals 3, they have their own s orbital. So let me actually draw this, and then we'll get to another figure. The, the 2s orbital, okay, in energy level 2, there is an s orbital. It's bigger, okay? And I'm going to stop shading it or putting dots. Just imagine that, again, you have a tree, and the apples fall closer to the center to the trunk and they get less uh, dense as you travel away from the trunk or away from the nucleus. Again, you got to think of these though as either one, but technically it could be up to two electrons. We're not going to get into the rules of how to populate these orbitals with electrons uh, in this unit. That will be for next unit. But again, just think of an orbital holding one or two electrons. Okay. Uh, in terms of one more review, and then we'll go see some new stuff. In terms of the probability, you know, these orbitals represent 90% probability. They carve out a shape, a volume, where you have a 90% or 90% of the time you can find an electron within that volume. Okay. All right. Now here's the new stuff. The new stuff, I'm going to have to use a figure from a textbook. It's called nodes. Nodes are places or volumes where there is 0% chance of finding an electron. Do you understand that we have to consider, if, if such thing as a node exists, and it does, we have to consider an electron a wave, because look at, uh, this is 1s, we've seen that before, okay? But look at 2s, 2s has, has a node right in between, within the sphere, between these two blue areas. How does an electron, right, how does an electron travel from this area to this area, or this volume to this volume, without passing through the zero probability. 
That could only happen if you have a wave, right? Waves look like this. You see how in a wave, in an ocean wave, this midpoint, right, is zero, zero. Again, it's very abstract, okay? You don't necessarily want to think of these just as particles because this will never work. A particle would have to actually travel through the node to get to the this central area. But that node means that there is zero. Schrodinger's equation solved for this. There's zero chance for an electron to be found there. The only way that could happen is you have a wave that propagates, that moves. A propagating wave. And in that case, you do have areas or um, parts where there is no wave, right? This is an, a wave, and the wave exists, but at this point, there is no wave. Just like at this volume, there is no chance of finding an electron. So when you think of the spheres, and I'll show you 2s and 3s, yeah, it's spherical, but it's not, the electron cannot be found in all places within that sphere. Okay. Now, what should we, should we say about this in terms of the number of nodes? Um, actually, I'm not exactly sure. I'm not going to count the nucleus as a node, okay, where r equals 0. So I will just call this one one node. Okay. So the 2s orbital has one node. And over here, the 3s orbital has two nodes. And I think we could go with that. There's a one node here and one node here. Okay. Okay. Those are the s orbitals. It's going to get a little bit funky moving forward because there are other orbitals that are not spherical. For now, I'm going to list the orbitals, not all of them, but a lot of them. We're not going to be concerned because I know many of you from high school know how to correlate the orbitals to the periodic table and how to fill those orbitals with different electrons. I am not concerned about that at this point. What I am concerned about is uh, showing you the first couple of orbitals in an increasing energy. Let me give you an example the 1s orbital. Okay, We're going to say that this is the lowest in energy because it's closest to the nucleus. Okay. It's uh, closest, or we should say the electrons. The electron within this orbital is closest to the nucleus, and it's therefore lowest in energy. And if it's lowest in energy, it is electrons found in this orbital are the most stable. I know it's a slog that we're trying to connect the Bohr theory to Schrodinger's equation to the idea that um, de Broglie says electrons can have a wavelength, and uh, also to the idea of Heisenberg that you cannot know exactly the position and the velocity of an electron at the same time. We'll get there eventually and we'll think we'll look at practical uses of all of these concepts. But for now, shape. We are worried about the shape and the size of these orbitals. 1s. Later on we'll learn that you can only fit two electrons per orbital. So where does a third electron go? Actually, let me put two electrons here. This is the 2s orbital. It's bigger, okay? And the electrons in the 2s orbital can be found further away from the nucleus. Now it gets a little bit weird, and I'm going to use a different color. We have the p orbitals. They're still going to be in the 2 shell, so we are going in order of energy. The one shell of electrons, or the one energy level electrons, are most stable, followed by the two. There are what's called p orbitals in the two energy level. And there are three of them. 
And the last thing is they have a node in the center. Okay, so this is technically a node for the p orbital. How would I label this? These are the two p orbitals, and there are three of them. So I'll put here three. Some textbooks, and I would like us to know this, can differentiate between the three orbitals. They all have the same shape, but they have different orientations. And the orientations mainly are going to be based on where the axis is. So technically, well not technically, but I like to know these as 2p, so this is up and down, we'll call this 2py, 2px, and 2pz. What is z? z is coming towards you and away from you, so like this pen cap. So that is the z direction, this is the y direction, and this is the x direction. So y, x, and z looks like this, in and out. So that's very hard to draw on a flat piece of paper. Okay, So I drew it slanted so it looks like it's coming towards you and away from you. Okay, Again, two electrons per orbital. Do not worry. You'll worry about this if you take organic chemistry. But do not worry that there are two lobes. Okay, There are two lobes and organic chemists will differentiate these two lobes as plus and minus. But for us, let's not do that. There's an equal probability for an electron to be found in this lobe as it is in this lobe. Okay. Now, when I fill up these orbitals, it doesn't matter where the two electrons are, just as long as they're within the orbital. You have a 90% chance of finding an electron within this shape. Okay. So there is going to be times where both electrons are on this side of the atom. And then we have, uh, I'll just put these separately. Okay. The order so far in increasing energy. is the 1s, then the 2s, then the three 2p orbitals, 2px, 2py, 2pz, and then I'm going to put etc. I know that for some of you this is very unsatisfying because you want to go on. We're not going to go on and look at what's next. It would be 3s, and then there's also three 3p orbitals. So we're, we're going to go on to the n equals 3 orbitals later when we talk more about the periodic table. I'm going to skip ahead and there's actually one more type of orbital that I want to discuss. You have the S, you have the P. The next one is called the D. So, so far we have SPD. Let me find that real quick. <clears throat> now the D orbitals are weirdly shaped. By the way, uh, how should we? I don't. Again, I don't know why they use the letter P to represent these orbitals. I think of these orbitals as dumbbell shaped. Dumbbell sphere, dumbbell. Okay. Next, the d orbitals. I should have picked up a figure for the d orbitals because I don't like drawing them. Let me find on my phone a picture real quick. Okay, the d orbitals. We have the s, the p, and the d. Okay, and in the d orbital, the first d orbital occurs in the third energy level. Okay, that's kind of strange at first, but the first d orbital appears in the n equals 3. Actually, I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't give us any p orbitals in the one energy level. So now we're starting to develop some patterns. The pattern is this. The first p orbital. We didn't see anything. We didn't see any p orbital in the n equals uh, one 
energy level. The first p orbital that we saw appears in the n equals 2. And then the first s orbital, right, for the hydrogen atom, right, we had an s orbital. Well, the hydrogen atom has a ground state in n equals 1. Okay. Let us take a look at the shapes of the d orbital, and then I will wrap up this video. Oh, right. The, um, sorry, I didn't mean to yell. The d orbitals, have, there are five per energy level. Just like for the p, what did we say for the p? There are three p orbitals per energy level. And over here we have, there's one s orbital. We had one s and we had two s, but within that w first energy level, there's only one s orbital per energy level. Okay per n. All right, let me draw you the d orbitals. The first d orbital, oh boy, is, I'm not going to even name them because they have funny names also, has four lobes like this. The next d orbital has something weird. It has a, looks like a p orbital, but then it has a halo. Okay, it's like that. The next one is like this, but now uh, rotated, so it's within the, let me double check, within the xy axis. Oh boy. Okay. The next one is within the xz axis. How am I going to draw this? Mm. I apologize. I I'm going to show you my phone in just a bit. Um, and then there's a fifth one. And the fifth one is... Yeah, I'm losing it. Okay, the first one is called 3D for the energy level 3. D, and they call this X2 minus Y2. This is 3dz squared. I would never ask my students to memorize this. Okay, and I doubt that your professor would ask you to memorize these names. 3dyz. Just like we had uh, 2px, 2py, 2pz. Over here. 2px, 2py, 2pz. Let me show you that if I can. They look like this. Okay. Again, I would never ask my students to memorize a name. I wouldn't even ask my students to memorize the shape. What's more important is that there are five d orbitals per energy level, but they don't start until energy level number three. There's one last orbital type. And that's f. And the first, sorry, the first f orbitals you see are going to be in the energy level four. So the first f orbitals appear in n equals four. And there are seven of them. There's a pattern. There are one s orbital per energy level. Then there are three p orbitals per energy level once you start into the p's. There are five d orbitals per energy level once you get to the d's. And there are seven f orbitals once you get to the f's. So the first one would be 4f. That would be your first f orbital. Those of you who are very good, or not very good, but have been introduced to this in the past, understand that this, what we just went over, the names and the shapes and the number of orbitals, atomic orbitals, can be correlated with the periodic table. And we started with hydrogen, 
that has an electron in the 1s orbital. We mentioned that once the 1s orbital is filled, you go to the 2s orbital. So the third electron for lithium goes in the 2s. Once you fill up the 2s, what was the next set of orbitals? The 2p. So here we have the 2p electrons, the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th. Six electrons can fit in those three 2p orbitals. We're not going to talk about the periodic table in this unit that much. We will correlate all of this, all of this, to the periodic table to tell you exactly or to report exactly where each electron is, what orbital it's in, right, within an atom. Just as a preview, and I've printed out, oh, here it is. Preview unit four. We will correlate, okay? We will correlate these atomic orbitals, S, P, D, and F, to the periodic table. This is the general shape of the periodic table. What I like to think about it is there are two columns here. Okay. And these two columns, okay, they're called groups, right? The columns are groups. These are the S block. Okay. We're not going to go through this again, this unit. This is the P block. And you notice the D block here and the F block here. What else do you have to notice? The first D orbital is in energy level 3. So we are going to think of this as n equals 3, even though it is in the fourth row of the periodic table. That's where it gets a little bit tricky, and we will save that discussion for unit 4. But that is a preview.